Every time I wake up in the morning, I fall down on my knees and... What comes out of their mouth is that they what? No God. But I can tell by how you behave. I can tell by how you act. You don't know God. No, I hear what you're saying, but your behavior is betraying your speech. Right, right, right. When you say one thing and you do another, then you don't know God. Right? So, it is, it is impossible for you to say that you know me when you have no knowledge of me. Right? People see you consistently and they say, I know you. What they're saying is, I recognize you. That's what they're really saying. But you don't know someone unless you receive some knowledge. We have the word of God. Unless you are truly in your word, you are only professing that you know God. You have no knowledge of God. Because when you have knowledge, there are certain things that you don't do. Right? There, there are certain things that you don't do. So, uh, if, uh, if if I was going to, uh, I'm going to I'm going to bake Brother McDonald's favorite pie. I'm going to bake Brother McDonald's favorite. I'm going to do it, but but I'm going to do it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm going to bake Brother McDonald's favorite pie. So you know what I'm going to bake? I'm going to bake a bean pie because that's Brother McDonald's favorite pie. Now. The way that Sister McDonald is looking at me right now is saying, that man does not know my man. Right? <laughs> Sister McDonald, is that his favorite pie? No. That's not his favorite pie. Now, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go in the kitchen, and I'm going to work real hard. I'm going to get my beans together. And I'm going to lay it around with my bow tie, because you know that's what we're going to do with the bean pies. I'm going to get everything out and put it in the oven. And, put it, and I did all this work all evening long. I mean, I labored and I worked really, really hard. And then I wrapped it real nice and I drove over to the house and I had a nice presentation. And I said, Brother McDonald, here's your favorite pie. It doesn't matter the amount of energy that I put in. It was without knowledge. Mm -hmm. And he says, as nice as you may be, you don't know. You don't know me. When you don't know, especially when we know that God is supposed to be first. Well, we know that God is supposed to be first. But there are some other things in your life that you need to have in the proper order. And the reason why we have much of our life, sometimes God can be in the right place, but we'll have other things in the wrong order is because you just don't know. You need to get some knowledge. <coughs> you need to be, for, uh, for, your, for your homework, you need to really sit down and write down what are the five things that are important to you. Now, if you say that family is your number three or your number two, your, your behavior will betray you. Uh-oh. Don't say one thing and then your behavior shows something else, right? So you need to see it because by your top five is really directing your life. Your top five is really directing your life. And, you, and your, your number two may be comfort, which is why it's killing your family or career. <laughs> Your number two may be an emotion. Mm -hmm. You value being comfortable. Mm -hmm. So anything that threatens your comfort, you, 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 you fight against it because you have it high on your list. Okay? You say knowledge is very, very important because without knowledge you can't worship. Number two. Turn someone, turn to Isaiah 45 and verse 5. Isaiah 45 and verse 5. I am the Lord. Yes. And there is none else. There is no God besides me. I girded thee, though <coughs> thou hast not known me. Keep reading. That they may know from the rising of the sun uh -huh. and from the west that there is none beside me. I am the Lord. Yes. And there is none else. Keep reading. I formed the light. Yes, he did. And create darkness. Yes. 
I make peace. I mean, know your history. Keep reading. And create evil. Yeah. I, the Lord, do all these things. Drop down, ye heavens, from above, and let the sky pour down righteousness. When you don't know that history, then you're bound to disrespect what's in front of you. Amen. You've heard me say this over and over again. When you don't know somebody's history and where they come from, then you don't understand their behavior today. So, it's one thing, definitely get a knowledge. If, if comfort is your number two, why? Sometimes we need, to, we need to get to know ourselves. We got certain things and certain orders and we don't even know why they're, we just, we just feel the way that we feel. You need to be knowledgeable of why that shouldn't be in that place. And then you also need to know the history. Especially with God being number one. He's, he's giving them a history lesson. Uh, lesson. He said, listen, in the beginning, there was nobody beside me. He says, I was it. So I know you see today, you see a lot of idols, and you're trying to find out whether or not uh, uh, we're the same. We're not even the same. If you know your history, you would realize that I was it. Why do they teach history in school? So you don't repeat the foolish mistakes of others in the past. They say, listen, if we can tell you what happened yesterday, then the prayer is that your tomorrow would be better. Right? The beautiful thing is, if, if Brother Barry has gone on before me and he <coughs> says, listen, these were the mistakes that I made. Because I got a history lesson, what should my future be? I don't have to repeat. I don't have to have the same, I, I shouldn't have to have the same testimony. Because I have, I have history now. And I have, matter of fact, when I read the Bible, I'm constantly reading of people who made mistakes. Right. So shouldn't I be able to avoid some of them? And when I realize what God has done, right? so, so number one, get some knowledge. Number two, learn about who God is and what he has done. And then that will give you a brighter uh, uh, future for tomorrow. And then number three, I want you to turn your Bibles to Psalms 40. Psalm 40. And verse 1. Psalms 40. Beginning at verse 1. I waited patiently for the Lord. I waited patiently for the Lord. And he inclined unto me. He heard me. And heard my cry. Yeah. He brought me up also out of a horrible pit, out of the miry clay, and set my feet upon a rock, and established my goings. And he has put a new song in my mouth. Yes, he did. Even praise unto our God. You know what he said? You know what the psalmist is saying? The psalmist is saying, I have personal experience with it. When you have personal experience, that's when you start rearranging your values. Right? So if you just look at those three areas, for the things that are on your list, how well do you know them? And do you know the history of others who had high value on them? If I said, hey, listen, the only thing important in this world is money. You need to give some money. Money is the rule of everything. Money changes the world. Money, money, money is everything. If you, if you have money, you can do everything. Now, if I'm talking like that, what would you say to me? You're idolizing money. What'd you say? That you're making money, you're idol. Am I accurate? <laughs> why, why would you say I'm not accurate? Because there are more things important than money. And I wouldn't know that unless I have some experience. Right. Exactly. All right. Challenge the things that are on your list. Some, sometimes things will enter into your life, opportunities will enter into your life, people will enter your life, and they'll start moving up the, but the thing is, how well do you know? Do you know the history? Do you know the background? And then what, what is your experience with it? Never, 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 never move anything off your top five unless you have some experience, unless you have some knowledge, and you know the background. Right? If you gonna, if you gonna start making major sacrifices in your life or something, you finna start making some major moves. How well do you know the history? 
How much knowledge do you have about it? Right? If you're gonna if you're gonna invest in a stock, what do they encourage you to do? Get some knowledge. <laughs> know the history. And what's the experience of other people who've invested in the same stock? If the experience is not good, and the reason why God is not number one in a lot of people's life is because they have not walked with God. They, they have not learned to lean on God or trust in him. The Lord, the Lord even says, didn't even have to say it, but the Lord says, hey, try me. <laughs> And see if I don't open up a window. But you, I can't force you to give me a chance. But but if we can just begin and have some experience together, because if anybody who walks with God for a while, your confidence grows and you start saying, Oh, and, and the reason why you say God is good, right. and the next thing you start doing is talk about your experience. Right. That was a time, and that was remember when, and I was in a real bad place. As the psalmist said in 40, hey, listen, I was in a horrible pit, yeah. but he heard my he has a personal experience. Yeah. Do you have a personal experience with God? Can you can you have a flashback and say, I know God is good, and finish your sentence, and give a personal experience? And, and, and outside of the personal experience, I have the knowledge. I know his word. I know how, how he's been good to other people. Amen. And I know Lord, opening up my eyes and blessing me just to see another day. 